Victoria is growing faster than any other state in the country. There's expected to be more than 10 million people here in 2051. But there aren't enough homes being built for them to live in. And with the cost of renting or buying a house the highest it's been in decades, the government's released a plan to boost housing supply and push prices down. It set an ambitious target to build 80,000 homes a year over the next decade. That includes knocking down all 44 public housing towers in Melbourne Melbourne and rebuilding them, starting with the high-rises in Flemington, North Melbourne and Carlton, with residents today left shocked and confused. But the government says this will triple the number of people that can live there to 30,000 by 2051. What's more important than somewhere to live? Well, nothing is. It is the most important thing. And we know that we're simply not building enough houses right now. Now to planning. There'll be an overhaul of laws so homes are built faster. You or your neighbour won't need a planning permit to build a single storey house or for a granny flat on a large block. And powers will be taken away from councils and given to the minister to fast track some housing developments. What we needed to see today was more money coming in to more building in relation to social housing. For renters, there'll be no rent freezes or caps as part of the changes. Instead, there'll be more restrictions on landlords hiking rent. There will also be what's called a portable bond. You'll be able to transfer your existing bond to a new lease if you move, so you don't have to fork out twice. And there'd be tougher penalties for real estate agents who underquote the price of homes. By failing to commit to a freeze on rents and ongoing caps on rent increases, the Premier has effectively abandoned thousands of Victorian renters. Frankly, Daniel Andrews could have promised 8 million homes uh, in the next 10 years because in a year's time he will not have built 80,000 homes. The housing shake-up's been welcomed by the property industry, but some have questioned whether the ambitious targets can be met amid rising building costs and workforce shortages.